Well, I feel like the, the two things are interrelated, but we should still discuss them separately. And even if you get this ceasefire um, in Eastern Europe, which, of course, everyone is praying for, nobody wants to see any more casualties, even if that happens, you really haven't gotten to the hard part. And the hard part is uh, not only has the market already done a great deal of tightening, and by the way, the, more, the stocks have held up considerably well uh, when you look at that, but we're talking about now shrinking the balance sheet. And shrinking the balance sheet is really what gave us the double-barreled uh, corrections in 2018. The Fed was trying to do two things at the same time and moving too quickly and maybe not appreciating some of the damage being done by the trade war at that time. This is similar, only instead of the trade war, it's supply chain-related uh, inflationary pressure and, and labor market inflationary pressure. But it's the same concept. You're going to try to normalize overnight rates while at the same time um, shrink the balance sheet, talk about shrinking the balance sheet, however you want to phrase it. And historically, that has not gone well for the S&P 500. So we've had a magnificent bounce since March 8th up until now, right? We really fell off a cliff at the end of February, sometime in the middle of March. Uh, we bottomed, had a historic run coming from that Fed meeting where we all basically faded the news. Everyone knew the Fed was going to raise. They did raise. Stocks were off to the races. Uh, and now the VIX is back under 20. And I talked about this last night, but I really think that we're range bound. And I would say one other thing about Farmer Jim's target. Uh, there's a big difference between the map and the terrain. So even if he's right and this year – we get marginally above 5,000 in the S&P. I wouldn't rule it out. Even if that does happen, that's just the map showing you where you're going to end up. That does very little to describe what the terrain is going to be like as we embark on this nine-month journey to get to that year-end target. And the terrain is where most people get tripped up. Well, because if you're talking about that level of choppiness in the market and being in this elevated VIX regime, which we clearly are in, not everybody gets to make it to the finish line un, un, undamaged. So I really think that that's the kind of year that we're going to be in, consistent, consistent with the third year of a bull market, which we talked about two weeks ago, historically is mid-single digits and it's a grind. It feels, so that's where I think we are and nothing has changed. It feels, Jim, and sorry, Jenny, I'll get you in a second. It feels, Jim, like it's a little aggressive. Like what has to happen for that um, to happen is but a pipe dream. And that is that let's just assume we get an end to the war in Ukraine. You suggest that Inflation's all of a sudden going to come down enough that the Fed's not going to be as aggressive as they are on inflation. That is so far from the base case that I question, frankly, whether it's even remotely realistic or not. So let me let me start by saying I love what Josh just said. I mean, it was so well put. Me I love too. a great analogy. And the terrain is going to be rough. There is no question about it. You're going to be hiking up rocky faces and slogging through the swamp. I think you'll get there. But it's going to be tough, and you're going to have to have discipline and guts to get there, okay? Now, is it a little aggressive, Scott? I agree with you. It's a little aggressive. Little? It's not a lot aggressive. And I say little? that I say that because you see that I say, I say that because you see the ports of Los Angeles. Long Beach starting to clear. You see the cash freight index rolling down. And tomorrow, I'm not on with you, but I will be very curious to see what happens with labor force participation rate. I'm not saying you're going to 2% inflation. I'm not saying that. That's unlikely. Time, time